What's up guys, Alton here. I'm just going to try to make a quick video and um, I want to talk about this current election that's getting ready to happen. And um, currently right now, as I make this video, we're probably about two weeks out from the election and some people have already done some early voting. And there's this big topic, this huge topic that has come about within the Christian community. And that topic is, um, you know, voting for a candidate, uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, um, you know, who promises to uh, legalize abortion, to have abortion on demand. And there are a lot of people who call themselves Christian or evangelicals who are getting behind these candidates who are promising that once elected, this is what they're going to do. You know, and and these are people, and you have evangelicals, and you have those in the Christian community who they don't like Trump. You know, understandably, um, you know the, Donald Trump is when you look at his actions, when, when you look at the, the way he carries himself, things of that nature. No one really, you know, no one really looks at that and says, hey, you know, that's a person who should be representing us as a president. And, you know, and, and I do agree. But one thing that's more important is policy. OK, Donald Trump has a policy and he has a plan to work with others to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, abortion is not going to get basically out of hand to where, you know, some of these, some of these leftists and some of these liberals in the Democratic Party are promising that, you know, abortion could, you know, it, it could take place uh, until the time of birth. A lady could be crowning and, and if the lady says, hey, listen, I don't want, I don't want the baby, abort the baby, um, they'll abort it. And this is what people like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is fighting for. And, and there's even talks that even after a baby is born, you know, within a certain amount of time, once that baby is born, that mother still has the right to declare for that baby to be killed. You know, not now as a Christian, I don't care how much you don't like a president, but you don't just go and vote for another candidate who promised to do something as heinous as killing a baby. You know, at any stage of its life, whether it's in the womb or out of the womb, you know, that's just something that we don't do, you know, and, and this is to me, this is it's just appalling for Christians to sit back and say, just because I don't like this president's conduct, I'll vote for the other person who promises to kill his babies. You can't even equate the two. One person's actions or one person's conduct that you disagree with. The, the way that they talk or the way that they act, you know, that does not supersede human life. You know, you don't, you don't say that, oh, well, just because this person acts like this, then that kind of gives me a right to go ahead and um, vote for this other person who may not act like that, who may be more poised and who may be more calm and they may not say the things or act the way that the current president does. But that person turns around and says, Hey, you know, I'm going to make sure that a woman can kill her child at any time during pregnancy or even after pregnancy, because we all know, as we've been seeing that stuff like this turns into a long, deep rabbit hole. And at first, everyone was saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't abort a baby up to, you know, um, to after six weeks. And then it went now it's up to like 20 something weeks. Now they're saying that even after birth, after birth, they're saying that a woman should be able to choose whether a baby lives or dies after birth. So what's going to happen when a woman has a five-year-old child and she feels like that she can't take care of that child anymore? Are there going to be centers now where you can take that child to be euthanized? You see what I'm saying? So we just know that that abortion is totally out of the question. And this is why I have such a problem, especially with the movement like the woke church, I re this is where I really, really have um, a serious problem with them because 
you know, you're supposed to be black people. You're supposed to be these super pro-black Christians. And, 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 you know, you're supposed to be out here doing this for the community and getting the gospel out to the community. But you'd rather sit back and watch Joe Biden and Kamala Harris bloody their hands with millions of black babies. Those are black souls. Those are black lives that God created. And you rather sit back and watch them massacre black babies in a womb just because you don't like Donald Trump and because the media has told you that he's a racist. This is what the media said. Because let's think, right before the election, 2014 and, and before, oh man, you couldn't keep black people out of Donald Trump's face. All of these people that's calling him a racist, Snoop Dogg, he got pictures with him. Uh, 50 Cent got pictures with him. Puff Daddy, all of these people running around here, Donald Trump, they got Donald Trump all in their uh, all in their rap lyrics. He was on a cover of Esquire magazine with ice, iced out chains and stuff, and people thought that that was so cool. But he runs for president, and people think that he's unfit to be a president, and all of a sudden he's a racist. First black people talking about that they wanted to be like him. Bun B. Bun B got lyrics talking about he's going to be the next Donald Trump and all of this stuff. Then he runs for president, and all of a sudden he's just this super racist. So you mean to tell me that you as a black person, you can't discern who's a racist and who's not? That's scary. And that's why I say that the woke church is a joke. You mean to tell me that you can point out that Donald Trump was a racist until after he ran for president? And all of a sudden, you'd rather sit back and watch the massacre of black babies because you don't like his conduct. And, you, and, and there's no gospel in... That, that there's nothing in the Gospels that you can use to justify that. To justify voting for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And you want to talk about Black Lives Matter this, Black Lives Matter that, but you're willing to watch Black Lives being massacred when you go to the polls and you vote for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And nobody's saying that you have to vote for Donald Trump. There's, other, there's going to be other candidates on the ballot. You can vote for them. You know? Now, I'm not a proponent of this, but if you decide that you don't want to vote, well, then don't vote. You know, I mean, I don't I don't think that it's a um, you know, some people, you know, they, they kind of on the fence about voting and not voting. I'm the type of person that if your conscience leads you to not vote, then I will say don't vote if you don't want to support any candidate. But don't sit back and, and vote for the person that promises to, to, to spill the blood of God's creation, man, people who are made in the image of God, don't sit back and go and vote for somebody who promises to kill these people. You know, in a woke church, I mean, you know, if y'all talking about y'all so well, maybe it's time for some of y'all to go back to sleep because, you know, I, ju I just can't believe that, that you got black people, black people who claim, who claim to be so in tune with what's going on, who claims to love black lives so much that they are willing to sit back and watch a white man and a woman who never claimed to be black. She claimed to be Indian, a white man and an Indian woman who's going to allow black people. They're not going to put these abortion clinics in the Indian community and in the white community. Majority of these Abortion clinics are they they are strategically placed in certain areas so black women can have easy access to these places. They're not putting fertility fertility clinics in these areas, in these black areas, but they got them up there in those white areas. So, you know, it's just I, I just wanted to make this this video, man, and, and just really get some stuff off my chest. Um, you know, some of y'all, some of y'all really need to repent. I mean, I just can't believe that, that we've got to a point in our society where us as Christians, we're supposed to be the beacon of God's light. And we're sitting here and we're locking arms with Satan just because we don't like another person. Just because we don't like the way that this person talks or some of the things that this person say, we'll lock arms with Satan just to see this person 
out of office and out of power. I just can't believe that. A person who, prom people who promise to kill other black lives and other, just other lives in general. I can't believe it. But anyway, guys, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section uh, below. You know, do you guys think that maybe I'm just being, you know, um, you know, I'm just being a little too harsh. I'm just rambling too much. Maybe it's not that serious. Maybe there's another side that I'm not seeing or another angle. Or if a lot of you guys believe that us as Christians, we should not be out here locking arms with anyone who promises to kill black lives once they're in power or lives, period. Babies. You know? But anyway, like I said, um, you know, if you guys like this video, uh, hit that thumbs up, like it, rate it, share it, uh, hit that subscribe button. If you guys subscribe, you know, make sure you hit the notifications bell. So every time I upload a video, you guys will be the first one to see it and you guys have a blessed day.